Welcome to the Werewolf Den, where we do a deep dive into the core concepts and principles behind White Wolf's Werewolf the Apocalypse. I'm Amelin. And I am Ryan. Welcome back. So we're finally out of those S's mm -hmm. and moving on to Older Brother. Now, I mentioned last time that I am finally going to explain why we keep on calling the last two tribes Older and Younger Brother. And it's really quite simple. The tribe we're talking about today is Uktana. We refer to them as Older Brother because this is the preferred name in canon and by the representative groups, from my understanding at least, to refer to this tribe. The use of Uktena and the way that White Wolf has used it has been judged by many within the Native American community as relatively ignorant and disrespectful because it lacks understanding of the source of the Uktena legends within the various tribes. There's been debate as to an alternative for what to call the tribe. The most common one I've come across is Bane Tenders. I tend to not prefer to deal with calling them the Bane Tenders because that's just the name of their camp. It's the version of that's on steroids. It just feels more respectful to me to refer to the name that most Native Americans, from my understandings and interactions, prefer that we use, which in this case is older brother. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if it wasn't completely apparent yet, this and the final tribe, younger brother, both deal with colonialism. You cannot analyze or consider these tribes without having an understanding of that. The way that older brother deals with colonialism, however, is a key part of why they're different from younger brother. Hello, Sheku. Do you have opinions? Oh, she does. She always has opinions. Yep. Here, we'll put her by the microphone. Yeah. Explain it for all the felines out there. Uh, talk about uh, talk about older brother. Oh, you're done now. Have you said everything you want to say? All right. <laughs> we'll keep her on my shoulder in case she wants to be by the microphone to say anything else. She's so useful. Mm-hmm. So yeah, where were we? Uh, the tribe's reaction to colonialism. The way I conceptualize it, it is a situation where colonialism and genocide have been visited upon you, but yet never came full term. That there are remnants of your culture that you're able to latch onto or piece together or dig back up. That there's something left over in the ashes that you're able to pluck out and sort of re-sew that quilt of what your culture is. One of the other camps that I really like within this tribe are the Earth Guides, who basically go to war-torn places where cultures are being afflicted by genocide and colonialism and work to preserve and shepherd and secure those cultures, to keep their stories, to keep their identity alive. And so I think that's a key thing about this tribe, that there is enough left over, enough that's able to survive, that you can piece it together and do something with that. One of the things that I like within the canon of this tribe is that it has sought out other cultures and communities that have been afflicted by colonialism. For example, it's mentioned in the books that when Chinese immigrants are brought over to work on the railroads and African Americans are brought over as slaves or becoming freemen, that they are included into this tribe as sort of kindred spirits. That there is a central cultural root placed within half of the Native American communities of North, Central, and South America. Uh, younger brother making up the other about 50%, it seems, geographically at least. But that there is a, a outward focus, and it's something that I really like because it, again, broadens out the tribe. They are not isolated to any geographic region. And I think it's, it's very plausible that this tribe can be opened up across the world. One of the characters that I've been playing recently is a member of Older Brother who is inspired by the genocide taking place against the Kurdish people right now. And when I was researching Kurdish culture for this character, I started to go all the way back to, you know, Mesopotamian mythology and religion. And there was a Mesopotamian deity uh, known as Enki, E-N-K-I, who has so many overlaps with White Wolf Suktena. His dominion, or its dominion is subterranean bodies of water 
Enki is associated with magic and mysticism and secrets. And I thought that's that's just a phenomenal example of cultural relevancy throughout the globe. So while colonialism and genocide certainly play a part in Older Brother, it is not necessarily the be-all end-all. We'll discuss that later when we get to Younger Brother. But because there are aspects of the culture that survives and can be maintained or even adapted and evolved. I love the idea of like a black Afrofuturist older brother tribe member where their culture has been stripped from them, but they've created something new from that. And I think that's a good example of an older brother concept where you're definitely rolling with the punches of colonialism and you're taking that in this new direction. So with this attempt to preserve what is left and create new ideas from it, the pursuit of knowledge is a key idea behind this tribe. So if colonialism is something that causes the tribe to react to, then the pursuit of knowledge is really the, the heart and soul of Older Brother. And again, something that I think works really, really well, that you can find this in all sorts of different cultures and communities that have been afflicted by genocide or colonialism, and that oftentimes have an intellectual root behind them. One of the things that makes Older Brother different from the other intellectual tribes that we've talked about is that the pursuit of knowledge often comes at great cost. That the pursuit of knowledge in and of itself is justified, regardless of the means. The tribe is commonly stereotyped as having these great rituals and these great magical gifts that allow them to bend the worm to their will. Bane tenders that you mentioned are an excellent example of this. That there are these great and powerful spirits that rest within the earth, and whereas other tribes will simply fight them and try and destroy these spirits, older brother is able to just bend them to their will, to bind them into the earth, to entrap them in prisons, or to weaponize them against the worm. And this oftentimes presents them as you know, nefarious or duplicitous and things of that sort, much like the Shadow Lords in their you know, political realm. But I think that's a very cool aspect of this tribe, that when it comes to fighting the worm, the adaptiveness that they've learned from reacting to all of these external forces has enabled them to sort of do the same thing to the worm that they can colonize the worm, in a sense, and make the worm do what they want to, to weaponize the agents of the worm and direct them back against the enemies of the Gardu Nation. And I think that's so freaking cool about this tribe. None of the other tribes really emphasize that over much. They might use the tactics and things of that sort, but Older Brother takes that quite literally. They fight fire with fire, and they do so successfully. Freaking cool. And with this duplicitous angle, I can now talk again because Shakes is no longer trying to turn <laughs> Surf herself on your spine. She is, she is no longer trying to boa constrictor my face. <laughs> you talked about this duplicitous aspect to it, which can have its problems with potential racism, but if we broaden the tribe out, as we mentioned before, we can get to what they were really intending to do, which was this aspect of trading in secrets that older brother does with this whole idea of knowledge for the sake of knowledge that means picking up things that many people within the garu nation should maybe not know maybe some secrets should stay buried and that's always a very fun angle to play with there's a danger to trading in these secrets and to white wolf's credit this is where you can see that they did read some Native American lore because when dealing with, I believe it was the Shawnee or the Cherokee who dealt with this particular version of the Uktana figure, which is this antlered serpent that has been secreted away into a cave held in a jar that is only for the people to see. I could be wrong on which tribe that particularly comes from. Please correct me if I am. I'll leave links in the description as to all of the different 
lore there is on this particular creature because there's so much. And that's the fun thing with these totems. You can bring all that in. You can look at all of these different legends and just be like, inspiration! Yeah, have so it much rain upon with. you and have it deal with all of these secrets that have been lost either due to colonialism compressing many multiple multiple different nations into a single category of people or being that secret weapon that the enemy is using that ooh 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 i want to touch the cursed sword i want to touch the cursed sword and dealing with the consequences of that i kind of get giddy just like any storyteller or dungeon master or whatever when players touch the cursed object <laughs> here's the thing i want to say to that point though if we're talking D and D, you want to make a cursed item, yeah. You want to tempt players with that and get them to fall. Cool. When you do that in Werewolf, please keep in mind that Older Brother is the most suited tribe to deal with that and come out ahead. ahead. That's something I want to emphasize here. You want mm -hmm. to tempt them with, you know, the powers of the worm. Cool. Go for it. But if you have someone playing Older Brother. Hopefully they're playing it smart, but don't indiscriminately punish everyone. This tribe is made to do these things and come out ahead. Mm -hmm. So you want to burn them a bit? Sure. But give them some token reward to show that, yeah, if anyone's going to tangle with these powers and forces, it's you. At the very least, give them a reason to do it again. And that's kind of the big thing. Don't completely burn them. Right. And if they come up with something cool and innovative, then yeah, absolutely. Let them completely undermine the antagonists and what they're doing. Because it's cool. It's it's cool to do that. And it, it gives this tribe its big claim to power. Mm -hmm. That they can do this and no one else can. Don't debase the tribes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically. Uh, but... Elaborating one final point on secrecy, let's be honest, every tribe has its secrets. Plain and simple. We talked about that with the Black Furies. Right. The Black the, Furies. They have will, entire cairns that, that are no their one knows secret. About, yeah. Right? Everyone is protective of something. And so it does kind of bug me when this tribe gets over stereotyped with that aspect of oh, they're secretive and they're liars and they're duplicitous. Like, every tribe does that to some extent. And so it kind of bugs me when older brother is seen in a negative light in that regard, especially considering what they've gone through. If you've experienced colonialism or genocide, it makes sense that you're not going to share the powers and the secrets that you have with others because they could use that against you. It's been done in the past. And so... The jar of the antler serpent is not meant to be seen by white people. Right. I think it's something that makes sense within the tribe. And so understanding this aspect of secrecy from a more wizened perspective, that this isn't necessarily a bad thing, that it is a learned and adapted behavior that has helped them to survive and thrive. I think that's important. Moving on to spirituality, we will once again let Ryan speak because Shakes apparently is trying to <laughs> boa constrictor my face again. Well, I think that's something that we've discussed to some extent. I don't know if there's much to elaborate. So I think that pretty much covers our impressions of Older Brother. Colonialism as an influence, but it's not the be-all end-all. This pursuit of knowledge. One last thing I want to talk about is sort of our hopes for W5, as we've done this with several of the, the very controversial tribes. First off, I would love to see some Native American authors get involved, or get included in... Authors, artists, like, whatever you can name, we want them apart. Yeah, to sort of highlight their cultures as a key demographic within this tribe. One thing I would like to happen is for the tribe to get broadened out. Much like how the Fianna are written as, or at least I should say, much like how we interpreted the Fianna as, yes, Irish culture has a place of pride at the table, but this is a concept that can be extended throughout numerous different cultures and communities. Would love to see that done with Older Brother. Give First Nations voices that place of pride, but highlight the, like I mentioned, the Kurds or Middle Eastern groups. I would love to see some Arabs that are highlighted within the tribe where you have this pursuit of knowledge and this intellectual basis that is 
infused and influenced by colonialism and Western aggression. I would love to see that within this tribe. There are lots of stories that can be told here while still remaining true and, and respectful of those Native American voices and perspectives and ideas and philosophies. In all honesty, I would love to see Native American voices brought to the fore with all the tribes because it's very, very clear that the initial inspiration of all the werewolves is sadly the noble savage stereotype. Mm -hmm. The fact that the equivalent of clans that was given to werewolf is called tribes Tribe. says that all. So... W5 in general, I'm almost of the opinion, should almost be solely written by people of Native American descent. But, barring that, hi, <laughs> I am now looking up because You have Shakes, a shake scarf. <laughs> Shakes is in front of my face. Get your butt out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most interrupted feline colonialism is, is ruining this episode. Uh, Sorry. Not your joke. Colonialism is terrible. It is. Where the fuck was I, though? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yes, Native Americans need to be at the forefront for writing W5. And this includes giving them representation within all the tribes, like we've been talking about before. This isn't about taking away older and younger brother from Native Americans so that more people can be included. This is about giving the entire concept of werewolf back to the Native Americans so that they can respectfully interpret it and then letting them broaden it back out on their terms. With that said, though, I think we've pretty much covered everything we wanted to cover with Older Brother. You agree? Mm hmm All right. So then, we are moving on to my second favorite tribe in all of werewolf, Younger Brother better known to many people as Wendigo. So, see you then. Welcome to the Pentax break room. Columbus? You mean, uh, dumbass? <laughs> Hey, dum-dums, you keep forgetting to promote your ko-fi. This is why I was interrupting- Any other thoughts? Columbus sucks. Thank you for your contribution. Shakes, out!